Hello you all. Welcome to this new edition of Lexio Musica, the place for great music, great lyrics and great meaning. My name is Guilain Prince. I'm a Franciscan friar from Canada. Love rock for a long time now. Hard rock, metal and prog. In this series, we listen together to one song. This is the reaction video. I already did my reaction video to today's analysis. Uh, let me give you the screen as usual. So, um, this song I reacted to, reacted to is The Past from the band Rush. As you can see, um, we are, uh, it's a series of 10 songs, 10 weeks about Rush. And uh, last week we did Subdivision, the 7th, uh, both the reaction video and the analysis and this week I already I already reacted to uh, the past if you haven't seen that video maybe you would like to go first to listen to that music um, with me both the uh, studio version with lyrics and uh, the live version now here is the analysis don't forget you can subscribe to the channel if you like great music if you like uh, paying attention to the words to the artists this is your home you are here and I love not only to do what I do but to read down here your reaction I love it the song the pass is the third song of the album presto of 1989 that's the 13th album of the Canadian group Rush the composer are Geddy Lee and Alex Lifeson as usual and the lyricist is Neil Peart the drummer as usual the structure we will come back to that but there's just enough familiarity with the pop rock song so we are we do not feel uh, in a strange world we but it it is used with creativity for musicians of you the structure is an intro a a b c a a b c is repeated with a small enter that is a repetition of the intro there is a longer section as a bridge musical bridge and um and uh, oh I forgot there's a D section there in this page uh, I will just put it down so that you know there's a D section right here you see before the final chorus which is a C prime I put C prime simply because there's a repetition of two or three uh, sentences but there are not there is not a real difference except the repetition three times the repetition of a one line so and it ends with the last chorus and I will tell you why if you haven't <laughs> figured it out all by yourself of course probably you did <laughs> let's dig into the word the words the introduction is made of two small cycles very simple two melodic line da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, and the other one just go downward so these little lines are repeated two times each that is the rhythmic and melodic basis of the uh, verses we as usual will see with uh, with rush we install the atmosphere and after that the words they kind of there's a completion between the words and the music that is always pretty much well established I've seen that in many many songs of Rush the general feel we have it's it's spacey there's a lot of space and I could say after listening uh, not attentively but uh, uh, I would say thinking of something else there was the album uh, in in the background and I could say that it's pretty much the feeling of the whole album and not that everything is slow like this one but the the, the I would say the spacey the everything that you have a lot of space in that album a lot of space for the instruments a lot of space also there's a lot of reverb which really makes it um, yeah 
there is something I wrote here sober sober it's I don't know in English if it's uh, uh, has the same meaning as in French but sobriété in French means it's a, it's a quality it's everything is uh, simple clean perfectly done I did but it, it doesn't have extravagance it doesn't have um, so no it's very uh, sober we say in French sober now let's dig a little bit into the lyrics and thank you for all of you English speaking reacting down here um, yeah English English language is not my mother tongue uh, I analyze the words from what I see but very often there is a background to some of the expressions that you will find in a song I don't have it this background and I thank you when you just remind me that uh, thank you very much so proud swagger out of the schoolyard waiting for the world's applause rebel without a conscious martyr without a cause this is in few lines uh, quite a picture that we have of a young person with this swagger is uh, it's 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 uh, attitude it's the, f the the ease the apparent ease and uh, uh, I would say the style the uh, 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 proud so out of the schoolyard so it's a very young person probably waiting for the world to about thinking that the world should applause so there's a little bit of uh, we see egocentrism here uh, turn towards uh, uh, oneself which is well it's part of life you know we we have those moments all of us rebel without a conscience we have yep it's it, it might be a good thing to rebel or to to uh, revolt for good reasons <laughs> but just rebellion for rebellion against anything you just against everything well there's no conscious there's no direction martyr without a cause well we can foresee that there will probably um, some final outcome of this song uh, that is not a happy one without a cause mm, I love this first paragraph static on your frequency electrical storm in your vein raging at unreachable glory straining at invisible chains there's rigidity here uh, as expressed in static on your frequency it means frequency you do not change your mind you do not change your perspective you are close-minded it with and this is another way of saying rebel without a cause there's a, a electric electrical storm in your vein you that you're boiling from inside electrical probably means uh, also energetic or something like that raging at unreachable glory you you kind of you would so much like to obtain this glory but it is an un, uh, unreachable and I think there is something a little bit prophetic about that song because I think it's even more true today with the social media people are really looking at trying to expose themselves make themselves interesting so that the world can look at them um, I think this is quite a song in fact straining at the ball invisible uh, straining it means a uh, prouvé in French um, at the visible you don't know what is uh, retaining you but you feel that uh, uh, as if you you don't have liberty to move but these these chains are not visible they are not physical they are somewhere within you in a way and 
I think that static in your frequency, uh, the fact that electrical stubborn raging means that it doesn't come out. Something does not come out, and and there's nothing. There's n so it could it could be not only chains. We could say uh, trying to liberate yourself from an invisible prison. I think it could very well uh, translate what is written here. Uh, of course, the invisible prison is within yourself. Here, uh, there is something quite unusual. Because the other section, I think, should be called the, 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 the chorus, we have something unusual. The pre-chorus, so the section just before what we call, call the chorus, the next section, is with the highest qual melodic quality. This is not done very often. Usually you keep your most beautiful melodic line for the uh, chorus here. It's for the pre-chorus and we will see why. And now you're trembling on a rocky ledge, staring down into a heartless sea, can face life on a razor's edge, nothing what you thought it would be. Um, this is very beautiful in terms of melody, but it describes something quite harsh, to be frank. You're trembling trembling on a rocky ledge. Uh, we say une corniche in French. Staring down at into a heartless sea. So the sea probably here uh, is the conclusion of what, of what will happen. I don't know if they, they relate something that happened in Ontario. The, the sea is not there, big lakes are there, cliffs uh, staring down. Uh, I think this line will talk about fascination towards something that is soft and deadly at the same time. Can't face life on a razor's edge. So the rocky ledge, razor's edge, you know how a razor is very thin and uh, the razor's edge is also in, in mountain language a very tiny path at the summit you can fall on each side very easily so uh, this person is also at the end and there's a razor's ledge so I see a dead end in a, on a very tiny trail towards the ocean so the, the 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 way to this point was difficult and then there is no other option than to be in the sea apparently nothing's what you thought it would nothing of that situation is according to what you thought and i think that you have a clue in the first verse, what the person expected the world to applause. And I think the description is quite good. It's the kind of expectation sometimes we do have when we do not obtain them, uh, we do not realize them, I should say. The deception is so strong, but it, it is, the deception is proportional with uh, I would say the um, expectations, maybe they were just not realistic in a way. But the deception will still be there. All of us get lost in the darkness. Dreamers learn to steer by the stars. All of us do time in the gutter. Dreamers turn to look at the cause. Turn around and turn around and turn around, turn around and walk to the razor edge, razor's edge. Turn, don't turn your back and slam the door on me. All of us, suddenly, the person talking is saying to the other one, we are us. We are in darkness. 
all of us get lost in darkness. It means darkness is not always there, but in darkness we get lost with the impression that there's no way out. But dreamers, they learn to steer by the star. This means that darkness is also the moment you can re-engage uh, your life in the right direction. As you know, the stars for the those uh, sailing in the old times, of course, they didn't have GPS. The stars were very uh, a, a, an excellent way to know exactly what is the direction you have to sail towards. So the darkness becomes for the dreamer the moment of reorienting his life. So it is not the place where the person feels completely lost. It's the place where life is reoriented or oriented to, towards a new goal, a new direction, or maybe simply to reaffirm that the direction was good, but it shouldn't have come to that place. All of us do time in the gutter. Gutter being the caniveau en France. Uh, we, we, we would say more le dalo in French. These sections we have alongside the, the, um, the, the, the roads so that the water goes out uh, through these, the system, you know. So those in the gutter, they, they have the impression that they are at, in a dead end. But <laughs> the dreamers is, a way, is, is able to just rise and look at the cars out, passing by, out the gutter. Uh, it's a matter of perspective. Turn around, turn around, and turn around. Uh, hear a note. That's the only section you could hear. Not, maybe not a choir, but certainly a few other voices saying, hey, you are not alone in that situation. Turn around and walk the razor's edge. But this time you will not walk alone. Yeah, there is a razor's edge, but you don't have to be alone. And this time, don't turn in your back. Of course, if you turn around, you will be following the person in front of you. Don't turn your back on me. And don't close the door on me. Because if you do that, there are no sides, the razor's edge doesn't give you any options on the right, on the left. You know that the C is on the other side. If you close the door, it means that you cut yourself from all options. But there is an option. But don't cut yourself from the last option of the razor's edge and the, the, uh, the reg, mountain reg, rocky reg. The inter is exactly the repetition of the intro with very, very light uh, and subtle differences. Here is the fourth uh, verse. It's not as if this barricade blocks the only road. It's not as if you're all alone in wanting to explode. This is a repetition in a way of what we've read in the uh, verse one and two. Um, it's not as if this dead end blocks the only road. No, no, no. There are many roads. And especially this road has another direction. You have to go back on your, uh, uh, on your uh, previous path. Uh, and it's not as if you were alone. Because if you turn around, you'll be with someone in wanting to explode. Here we see the same thing as in the first verse uh, and in the, 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 the chorus. You are not alone. And we will see that we experience that also. But someone set a bad example to you. Made surrender seem all right. The act of a noble warrior who lost the will to fight. 
Yeah, we go back to uh, this idea that uh, some people, they will present their suicide, because it's a question of suicide here, as you know, will present it as a noble act. Here he says, no, don't take an example of those people who kill themselves, uh, apparently with um, high principles or uh, justification. No, it's simply a warrior who lost the will to fight. So there's, there's the will, the lack of will here as being presented. Um, surrender as if it was all right uh, for rush surrender and um, losing the will to continue is not an option now again the pre-chorus with the same words as the number three with one difference Instead of having can't face life on a razor's uh, edge, we have, uh, sorry, done with life. Now, uh, as if the conclusion is very close, very, very close. The chorus, you know already, we are we all get lost in the darkness you're not alone turn around turn around don't close the door on me it's even written slam the door which is of course the movement of, of closing abruptly now i would i would suggest that we can consider that the bridge is in two parts, instrumental section and singing section. It's the same feel as the intro with uh, the fill, the fills are not there. You remember, ta -dum, ta -dum, tss, tss, tss. so the tss, 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 and this section still there, we don't, don't have the concluding or the fills uh, that comes in between the words. It's all space is given to Lifeson's solo. It's sober, melodic, exquisite to my taste. It's beautiful. I think we can hear there the very kind and attentive human beings that Rush as a band are, as a group, as, as persons. Um, but we feel that at the end, uh, it seems that there is the act of suicide. To which uh, a new section that I call Bridge Part uh, 2 or D section, Section D, um, there is no hero in your tragedy. Yeah, the act has been done. No daring in your escape. No salutes for your surrender. Nothing noble in your faith. And we don't hear very often uh, a band swearing in the middle of a song that is very... But here it's not, of course, it's maybe not um, very offensive because I, we hear that in comedies, we hear that in movies quite a lot. Of course, Christ here is not calling to Christ. It's more like... Uh, why why did you do that ah oh, there's a little bit of rage um, in, in the heart of this singer saying what have you done uh. yep and you know already the 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 line that has been uh, repeated three times is turn around and walk the razor's edge three times repeated and it ends with don't turn your back and slam the door on me the words resound resounds in emptiness as if it it is really the meaning of the song
last words resounding in empty space. Now, in terms of uh, the, the, the in terms of music, there's both a common and creative format. We already talked about the AABC structure. That for musicians, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, a bridge which is a little bit longer than the intro but not much and the bridge is not the instrumental bridge is not very long and the instrumental spoken bridge uh, the spoken bridge sorry or uh, song bridge is not very long either and then i wrote c prime just to say that it's basically the chorus but uh, just the uh, the three lines repeated so the intro install the atmosphere of section a now uh, no, note that this part will come back in the chorus a little bit later without the punch of the fields uh, section d recognizing uh, the, uh, there's a section where we recognized what happened and there's anger deception uh, we can hear it very well and uh, there we go to c prime that becomes basically the final there are no instrumental final other than the the, the, the chorus itself don't turn your back, don't slam the door, etc. There's an, only one section that is collectively sung, turn around, turn around, and turn around. This song manifests clearly sadness and compassion. Musically, there's no doubt about the, the feeling of what we hear. Now, the lyrics are beautifully, beautifully constructed. Words are responding to each other. You, I showed you uh, the pre-chorus and the chorus. I showed you uh, the structure of uh, the A sections. The D section reveals the turning point, but something quite interesting is that if it is the end of one person's life, the song does not finish there. Rush turns towards the listener with the same compassion and now they are not talking to a character the character of the song they are turning towards their audi audience basically saying the same message don't turn around so rush understands that life is not easy and that there is no dead end there's only a dead end for the one who stays alone. Young persons live a difficult situation. It can be difficult. Sometimes they feel alone. They feel as if they are the only ones. The song recognizes that. Life can be cruel. There's no uh, pretension that everything is poppy and, and joyful and, and no. life can be cruel. But you are not alone, says the song. The dead ends or the gutters are closed only in one direction turn around not only there is an opening in that direction but there is someone you will feel alone only if you look in one direction if you look in the other direction there will be someone in fact the other is the open uh, the open road rush understands very well and they probably lived such situation because we can see in the song that they talk with the knowledge of the situation but they also know by that by looking at the stars looking at the cars uh, it, it is is an opening uh, a new dimension of i would say what could be only a one direction consideration of reality i think the only frequency the only one orientation that the young person has the close-mindedness is probably 
uh, the problem here because if the same situation is looked uh, with the uh, I would say a broader a larger perspective the gutter is a very small part of reality um, if the dreamer opens his eyes towards the stars in fact can find direction orientation uh, the darkness will be you will feel lost on leaf he doesn't look at the stars now the passage what is the meaning of uh, the pass I think that we can uh, personally I need I, I know three um, definitions of the word pass the first one is the mountain pass a narrow passage a trail the song clearly refers to that it's an analogy walking in life with the impression that there is a very very few options and the road is tiny razor's edge and that no options on the right no option on the left and then you arrive at a dead end with only one option is that uh, to fall in the sea it's a very difficult situation especially if you are in darkness not able to open to look at the stars so a difficult passage the pass in sports is the moment you try you, you throw the ball or you send the uh, the puck at on ho in hockey to someone else and I'm not sure that the song is not uh, referring to that as well maybe it's time not to play by yourself only to be able to play with others um, to trust someone else with your life with so trust into someone else as being the real way to live uh, a real life the pass that you have for a show if rush gives you a pass vip pass you will go to places extraordinary the pass is the access to something else maybe to another part of yourself the song might be a key for something greater and here I share to you a small bit tiny bit of experience spiritual in spiritual direction and, and different things I really truly believe that the worst in our life is very often experienced right before the greatest changes the greatest moments of change this is a conviction I have so so much every time I'm about to quit something it's because there I am about to be renewed but the the impression we have is that we are in a dead end and sometimes just before the big changes there is the temptation to leave or to quit and this has been experienced by me and people around me so many times that uh, I would say that's pretty much a conviction I have when we think that everything is closed it's because we are about to find a new path a new door this is it friends my uh, analysis of the song I hope you will have a little bit of time to comment down here um, next week is nobody's hero in uh, the next the ninth song so uh, slowly we are going towards the end of this journey with rush <laughs> I don't know if you liked it but I'm totally I, I will listen to other albums of Rush uh, there will be the reaction video with uh, the uh, the um, chat function the the premiere I'm usually there last week I missed it because I was in a meeting but most of the time I'm there so be feel at home to come I'm always happy to to talk to chat with you uh, during the the first time that the video is published 
Uh, it's 7.30 in Western Europe, 1.30 in Eastern and North America. And on Saturdays, most of the time, there's, there will be the analysis of the song. So don't forget, you can subscribe to the channel. Uh, feel at home, you are, this is your channel. If you, you have suggestions, don't hesitate. Uh, and uh, it will be very nice to have your comments and uh, I, will take, I will take them into account, don't worry. As for now, this was the analysis of the beautiful song, The Pass. I think the song shows so much understanding, compassion. Um, I would say also uh, a kind of, of sadness, but also anger towards the fact that young people um, choose this option as if it was an option. It is not, according to Rush. Bye-bye for this week and see you next week.